miss this shot, you're not just letting me down, you're letting your whole team down too. Mad props. Hello and welcome to Mad Props, the place where you get mad props for your movie and TV props. Here, every prop matters and every prop has a story. I'm Simon and I am joined tonight by Mighty Ducks enthusiast, Karate Kid, Cobra Kai enthusiast, generally enthusiastic and awesome guy, Jason. How's it going? Good, man. Good to uh, finally talk to you. An, an absolute pleasure. Same to you as well. I mean, we've uh, we've like met and sort of interacted through the the prop collecting world, so to speak, um, and and mainly through like uh, the Mighty Ducks, but also then learning that you're a massive Karate Kid fan as well, which which I am as well, and, and Cobra Kai. So uh, yeah, awesome to sp- uh, you know speak to a like minded person. But let's go all the way back. So can you tell us initially like how the Mighty Ducks entered your life and you know why these movies hold so much weight with you? Sure. It was, I think it was 1993 after Christmas break. Uh, I had just gotten, I think, a Sega Genesis. It was, I think that was when it was, or it was a Sega Genesis game, I forget. But me and a couple of my buddies were playing. And then my mom's like, hey, let's go to the 99 Cent Theater. There's a movie called The Mighty Ducks Playing. And I had heard of the Mighty Ducks through the Disney Channel, but I wasn't huge into hockey at the time. Um, It wasn't a big, like, we have to go see this. And I remember being, like, quite perturbed because we were just, like, really having a fun time playing these games. And, you know, but that at that age, you know, you don't really have much of a say. Your parents are like, let's go. So we went. And this theater was, like, packed. And people... And I remember this was like the first movie experience I had where people were like cheering and people were like almost groaning and uh, like, you know what I mean? Like when the ducks are starting to get good, people are kind of like clapping. And when uh, McGill injures Banks, people were like, oh, <laughs> and it just felt like you were a part of something. And I was like, that was so good. And I remember the theme song, you know, that do, 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 do. And it just like wouldn't leave my head. But, you know, we left and that was the days when, you know, it would take about a year to, for a movie to come out on home video. So between seeing that and then I kind of lost like the gusto for it or not, I didn't lose the gusto for it. I just was kind of out of mind. And then when it came out on video, you know, I bought a copy and I loved it. And then in, shortly after spring break in um, 1994, D2 came out and I went with one of the got my friends who I went to go see the first movie with and another good friend who's now my brother-in-law and that was like how people describe Empire Strikes Back like seeing that movie like D2 for me was just like this like I have goosebumps I feel emotional it it didn't like it was crazy and I literally left the theater that day with like an obsessive feeling like almost like it felt amazing to me I think everyone else in my life was like that's weird like you know okay great like time to go to bed like did you do your homework and I'm like my life has been changed and and I don't know how it was changed I wasn't like doing anything differently but my life felt different and I wanted to dig deeper with my friends and the guy who would become my now brother-in-law he was just getting into playing roller hockey and so the movie he didn't become obsessed or become a fanatic over the movie like I have but you know I think these movies kind of inspired so many people our age which I was 14 when D2 came out so and 12 when the first one came out so I think it inspired a lot of us to start playing like roller hockey and even ice hockey and so he started really picking it up and, you know, another one of our friends did, and then another friend did, and then I did. So I just felt like there was just this, like, brotherhood almost kind of thing. Like, and I so badly in my mind wanted to be like, we're the Mighty Ducks, you know, we'll take on this team. And we joined, like, a roller hockey league, and we could create our own team. And, you know, uh and I just remember just like thinking this was the greatest and I was terrible. And, 
but it did, that didn't matter to me. It was like, I was with my buddies and we were taking on other teams and I just loved it. And most of the guys on the, those team, the, on that team are still in my life today, are still people I consider friends. Uh, recently caught up with one of them or both assistant coaches on our son's little league team. And so he actually lives across the street. And so we're just kind of recalling those days. And that's how I got into it. I, I love it. I love the fact that like, you come out the cinema for D2 and it's like the switch has gone off and it's like, okay, I'm obsessed. I'm into it. I love that. Like sort of having that self-awareness that that has begun. I, honestly, I'm not trying to be funny. I think that, I don't know if I would have noticed like an armed robbery. I just like walked out being like, <laughs> this was the greatest thing. And again, like I can only compare it to how people like talk about the first time I saw Empire Strikes Back, the first time I saw Rocky, the first time I saw Indiana Jones. Like for me, that was D2. Like, <laughs> I love it. Um, and it was much different experience, you know, from like seeing the first movie being like, okay, it's kind of out of sight, out of mind. And it comes out on video and like, oh, you know, kind of relive it. It was just like D2 crazy. I mean, I went out and bought the cassette tape of the soundtrack. I would went, go out and buy these little teen bopper magazines just to learn about my favorite docs. <laughs> <laughs> it was just um, very consuming, actually. Yeah, no, I love it. And I can completely relate. And, uh, you know, I felt the same way i mean i i was a bit younger when i um saw the movies for the first time i actually told uh this story when we had matt doherty on who played Averman on off the first time he came on the mighty 90s and i'll just give the very quick version but basically i started uh what we call secondary school which i think it would be like the equivalent of middle school so when you're like 11 years old and yeah. I went to this to this new middle school, which was away from like all of the the friends that I grew up with. And I really I didn't like it. I was having a bit of a rough time. And I was in um, PE or phys ed, as, as, you, as they might call it out there. And I look across and I see another another kid. And I don't know any of these kids. And he looked like he looked like Joshua Jackson or like Charlie Conway. So I look over and in my deluded 11 year old mind, I'm like, Charlie, like, and in my mind, I actually thought that he was there, that Charlie Conway was suddenly at my school and like that all of the ducks were there. And I look and the guy's like, shut up. And I, oh no, okay. This is just a schoolyard bully that I'm like mistaking for this Disney character, you know, back into the shadows I went. But my point is, is that like these movies, mean so much because they're about underdogs and like when I think everybody can relate to feeling like an underdog at some point within their life and it's about like that you know banding together and overcoming these hurdles and then eventually you know winning spoilers but if you haven't seen the Mighty Ducks by now come on uh you know and and they win and I think that they 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 hold this special place with people and it resonates with people so I I to I totally get it I think you know, another thing that was so special for me and why it resonated is I was never like, and I don't mean this for like a pity party, like you don't have to like insert like a off track or something, but like I was never the best student, never the best athlete. Um, I came from a pretty dysfunctional family at the time and just kind of like Charlie was a single mom, just him and his mom. Uh, these kids weren't all rich. I mean, none of them were particularly like just so handsome or beautiful like they were just like your typical kids who like you said in the end ended up winning and I found that really inspiring um so yeah that's a cool story though too like I love how you thought the guy was Charlie I mean it's a it's a sad story but I find <laughs> it I found it funny to look back on now and uh I've always been someone that's had like an overactive imagination. Like when I was in school, it was always written on my reports that I was, I was the kid that was just daydreaming, looking out the window, just watching like squirrels on trees and things <laughs> rather than like focusing on the class. And quite often more than not, I was like playing out movies in my head or imagining if, you know, I was in the mighty ducks and all that sort of stuff. And quite honestly, they kind of like, it can kind of like save you in a way because this like this uh you feel like you're part of the world but i mean but but speaking of that so uh you haven't spoken about d3 so d3 comes out how did you feel about that i so 
Um, we, <laughs> I knew D3 was coming out just because of the teeny bopper magazines that I was buying literally just for like Mighty Ducks articles. And I remember my mom, my sister and I went to a movie. I believe the movie was Matilda and there was a preview for D3 and I just lost my mind and it said October 4th, 1996. And I just, nothing else was going on in the world at that point. <laughs> and so uh, me and my two, uh, me and two of my friends and one of his brothers, we all went and, you know, they thought it was like good. I'm like, was mesmerized. And I was like, just, I don't know. I know everyone, it's everyone's least favorite and it's my least favorite of the three but it's still so good i think and i think there's something to it i think um but it feels it feels like it's a different movie it does the tone um, is different is it feels a bit more like uh there it's more like that's a disney channel tv movie and the other two sort of I think that they, I just said this in an episode I did the other day. I think that the first two are taken more seriously, which I know, <laughs> I know that can sound crazy when, you know, you've got like Dwayne roping people on, on the ice in the second one and things like that. But like the score, the, the opening credits, it's all, it's all like the opening credits are like from like a lethal weapon movie, you know, it's like taken so yeah. seriously and, but I love it. And it's kind of, that then translates to the audience if you look at like the opening credits of d3 it's almost done with it's almost it's got jokes and things in the opening credits straight away it's almost like that one's tailored towards uh kids more and which they're all four kids but there's a different tone from the beginning i like d3 as well um but i i kind of I haven't seen D3 as much as I've seen one and two. And I, I didn't discover D3 until a couple of years after it had come out. Cause I didn't even know it existed. Uh, Cause this is like, you know, pre-internet days. And I was super happy when I found it like straight away. I was like begging my, I remember, I actually remember like we were in the supermarket doing like a weekly shop, like with, with, with like my parents. And I used to like wander off while they were like, you know, getting the food. And I'd always go straight yeah. to like, the movie aisle. And I saw it there and I was like, Oh my God. And I like took it. I remember like basically like excitingly jogging back to my parents and I was just like, dad, please, please just buy this for me. <laughs> and uh, yeah, sorry. I've gone off on a tangent. So, so you, no. how, how do you rank them then? If you were to rank them from favorite to least. Oh gosh. Um, and I've heard you ask other um, people you on this podcast, the same question. I've thought like, how would I answer that? Two, I feel like, in a weird way, like kind of changed my life. Like how I viewed things, how I wanted to accomplish things, how I saw myself, but you couldn't have two without one. And, you know, there's just so much good there in part one. So storyline, I think storyline, if I'm going by storyline, not me emotionally or how I feel about it, one, two, three, but emotion, which one do I put on? If I'm, if I can only watch one for an entire year, I'll probably, I'll put on D2. Then it would be D2, the first one and the third. I think something that the third one was kind of missing was in the first two, they were always the underdogs. And in part three, like when they play, I think it's the Blake Bears. They're like way taller than the Blake Bear kids. Like they were like, the Blake Bears were like how the Ducks were in the first two movies, like the little guys. And it's like, it, it, it kind of took a lot to think of them as like, you know, underdogs. Like you, you felt like they were supposed to cream everyone they played. And, you know, even the varsity, it's like, these guys just won the junior Goodwill games. Like how come they're struggling against this prep school? <laughs> so I felt yeah. like there was some like hits and misses there, but still very enjoyable. And maybe that's just the biased Ducks fan in me, you know, but it's still enjoyable, but the least of the three yeah i think i think everyone would would agree with you on that uh, i just had um carlos on from the hey do you remember podcast which is my it's my favorite podcast of all time i say it all of the time um jason if you haven't you you have to listen to it because there's uh they cover a d1 and d2 and it's so funny it's so good um have you ever heard of that podcast 
No, I saw that. I, that's one of the ones I haven't gotten to yet. Um, but it's the one you just posted, right? Yeah, yeah. It's um, it's a great one. I think you'll really like it. And you know, anyone else that's you know into nostalgic '90s and '80s movies, which I imagine is anybody <laughs> listening to this. Um, but he made a really great point of saying that it felt like they had done the movies out of order. Like it felt like it should have gone D1, then D3 and then D2, because it's kind of a bit anticlimactical that it goes from, okay, local peewee, you know, league to like the junior Goodwill game, like international and then back to like, you know, sort of high school prep school, whatever, where maybe it could have gone, you know, peewee, the high school junior Goodwill games. I mean, I absolutely, kind of makes because of what you've kind of you've already peaked and now you're coming back down you know <laughs> yeah it's like well why were the ducks chosen to be the junior goodwill game you know representative rep- representatives if you can't beat these guys <laughs> you know what i mean like these guys should have been the in the junior goodwill games but that's hollywood yeah i mean i i, I love it i i wouldn't have it any other way you know it's just it's just great conversation points to have i mean i think i i agree with you by the way um i mean if i was to put them in order mine would go d2 d1 d3 but i think d1 is the best made movie of all three of them in terms of the the way it's shot the aesthetic the storyline the character development i think it's like it's like a 90s classic like i think it can stay it stands up with uh, it's kind of almost got some John Hughes type elements to it at certain times and the way it's shot and there's like the emotion to it like when the flashbacks of like young Bombay with his dad on the lake like that's that that gets you and then but but what's great great with D2 is it's just it's got all of the fun and all of like the sort of shimmer to it and all of the like I like I love the moments with um wolf and bombay trying to do the free bar and all of that stuff like it gets me hyped still and um and yeah the background music is just so good someone a, a person i know of he posted this facebook post like what's your favorite disney music and i wrote like the scores to d2 the mighty ducks mm-hmm. and it was never released and there's this company called mondo i don't know if you're familiar with them but they do a lot of like soundtracks and sometimes obscure soundtracks and i would love for them to do and they do some disney ones i would love for them to do the ducks on vinyl because the score to d2 even d3 is really good uh it's almost like d3 almost has that like gothic choir music like Mm -hmm. when like uh the varsity coaches like hit them hard you know they'll break and some and you know the ducks are like flipping all over the place and it's just like man that music oh and the showdown versus the varsity that music it's like wow let's like get you um but d2 felt larger than life like it was just it was just incredible man it was like like i said it was my those movies are my star wars and <laughs> you know how other people see harry potter like is how i see these movies along with the Karate Kid ones, you know, those are my two franchises. Yeah, I mean, yeah, totally. I, I love I love the Karate Kid as well. So we're, we're going to move on to the props in a second. But just to say, yeah. with the with the Karate Kid, so I, again, I just told this the other day, um, I had never seen it until last year. Isn't that crazy? I, I know, I like I knew. Almost about, unbelievable. I know, I know. And especially like me, that's like I'm someone that, that loves, you know, the 80s, the 90s. And uh, it just skipped me by. And so I I watched it last year during lockdown. I loved it so much that I watched it three times within the same week. I just had to keep watching it. And then obviously watched the, the second one, the third one, and then went straight into Cobra Kai. And uh, I just loved, I loved it loved it so much and then i i told my wife that she needs to watch it watched it with her as soon as we'd finished it she loved it so much we went straight back to episode one and watched it again like back to back um i think it's one of i think it's it's my favorite current tv show like by far it's amazing it's absolutely mine uh we like my family we've been really enjoying game changers and i'm thankful for it because it got my son obsessed and hooked and my daughter's even into it 
it was like a gateway to the Mighty Ducks movies. But as far as, but Cobra Kai is just, it's just so good. And one of my favorite things about it is that it's just like four friends or three or four friends coming together who view those movies, like I said, as their Star Wars and they wrote it. And these were just like three jive fanboys. So it'd just be like if a few, like think like I heard you and, oh man, I love the one. I think his name is Theo from Slime TV. Yeah, oh, yeah, I yeah. love that podcast. I, I I watched it twice, and I just cracked up so many different times. It was so good. Thank you. Man. Um, imagine like you two, and you know Connor and Aaron. You know myself. I'm kind of injecting myself into that little posse. <laughs> we 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 wrote Game Changers. You know what I mean? Like I'd love to. I would love to. Like the little nuggets there, and it it's just so good. But you know, I real fast, I got into the Karate Kid world. Karate Kid 2 is my first memory of going to a theater. Mm. Uh, we lived in Massachusetts. My parents and myself, we went to, I don't remember my little sister there. She would have been three. So maybe my grandparents or a friend was watching her. But we went to a restaurant called The 99. It was right next to a Kmart. And my dad took me in there. And he bought me the Daniel Sun action figure that breaks the ice. And a Mr. Miyagi. And, you know, while we were we were waiting for them to, there was like a 30 minute wait at the restaurant. So that's when we went over. And so we bought it. I was just so happy. I had no clue what they were, but they were just like these action figures. And then we went to the movie. So I didn't even remember seeing the first one. I don't think I had seen the first one at that point. And I just loved it. I just loved it so much. They're the best. Um, I love them. I cry kid is there as like, it's in my top 10, I would say, of all time. Like the first one, I enjoy all of them, but the first one is so special. And um, again, to to quote what Carlos was saying, he was saying it's like Rocky. It's like Rocky for kids, but, but not even though. I mean, like I agree with him, yes. But to me, it's better than Rocky because I, I love Rocky as well. But yeah, it's... I don't know. Again, it has some of those things you can relate to from like the Mighty Ducks of uh, I know that Rocky is the underdog as well. But, you know, in terms of, you know, he's, he's bullied in school, but he also he fights back. And I mean, I know that there's the whole Cobra Kai angle of that he was the bully, you know, from Johnny's perspective. And the humor is so good in Cobra Kai. It's just a great, amazing franchise. I hope it never stops. I know it will. Cobra Kai is perfectly written yeah it is and i know the big question because i you know i'm on different different like cobra kai and karate kid groups is well next season it alludes that there's going to be the big tournament between miyagi do eagle fang karate (laughs) and uh cobra kai where do they go from there you know is it like started fighting robots or things like that and (laughs) I just, and while I get the point, like, oh man, like I, I don't ever want it to get to the point where it's just like ridiculous. So what's the, so are you familiar with the phrase jumping the shark mm-hmm. um, from the show happy days where they're like, I guess that's when the cast said to themselves, like, okay, like we're now starting to go downhill. Yeah. I don't want them to ever like get to the jump the shark, but I just trust these writers so much because yeah, they do it perfectly. Yeah, they haven't missed a, a single step, and and uh, the way that they've incorporated, I I, I love I love it when um, they go where Daniel goes to uh, Okinawa. Have I pronounced that right? Okinawa, Okinawa, yeah. Okinawa, sorry, Okinawa, and I love it <coughs> when he goes there, and and then they they manage to bring the characters back, and they bring in the original actors back, and it's just they they blend in the nostalgia so perfectly. It's like not too much, not too little. The fact they brought Elizabeth Shue back, uh, I love it. It's perfect. It was never, it was. You don't feel like any of the big moments are ever forced. Like we have to have Elizabeth Shue in here. And like, I love the fact that, you know, they leave it the door wide open to her and Johnny having a relationship, but they also leave it wide open to her not having her, her never being back because Johnny's with um, McGill's mom right now. Yeah. And he's choosing McGill's mom, but at the same time, like it may not work out and Allie, you've always been the girl I loved and she comes back. And um, 
like I said, I'm my family as a whole, we're loving game changers, but there's parts when you're like, just do this. <laughs> um, just yeah. there's, and I know the whole COVID thing kind of ruined some things, like maybe some things that they alluded to, they would have loved to done do if, you know, COVID wasn't an issue, but you know, I mean, I know when they play like the do, do, to do, it always is like, kind of gives you that warm fuzzies mm -hmm. and the episode with the reunion was great, but it's like, there's still like other moments that can happen. Yeah, completely. I mean, I'm, I'm one behind at the moment um, on, on game changes. I'm just putting that out because I, I don't, I don't want to get spoiled, but I, yeah, I, know yeah, yeah. They, I know that they brought some of the, uh, some more of the teams back. Cause I, I kind of saw that on online, but I, yeah, completely. I think that it's really good. Like I'm enjoying it. Um, I w watching it with my, with my wife as well. And she's, she's like a good barometer, I think, because she cares about like the mighty ducks, but she doesn't like, she's not on the level that, that we're on, you know, with it. She, she's on like a normal person level. <laughs> we take it to a different level, like you, me, Connor, Aaron, Theo. Yeah. We saw like it's a different playing field of uh, extreme, but so she's a good barometer to seeing how it's going. And I think that as much as I, that there, there is just a couple issues with that. I don't think they're leaning into the, the nostalgia enough. And I think Cobra Kai is a great example of where they get that balance. Right. And, and I feel like they've forgotten who coach Bombay is as a character. Like they've kind of forgotten, like he's kind of living like a, a shell of himself. Right. But yeah, kind of forgotten that he was, a high class lawyer, right? And you know he he's a re he's a really intelligent guy, and you've got him just like eating old cake out of a box and stuff. And it's like, okay, yeah, sure, his his life's gone down this path, but like I feel like they've they've lost some of his some of his essence. Um, and then it has those moments that are great, and I think all of the kids are great, and I think Emilio Estevez is doing a good job. I'm not saying any of that. I just think that. Um, I don't think they've completely honored the source material. I mean, may, maybe that's just me being too harsh. No, I, I think I agree. And I think it's, for me, I kind of have to objectively, like purposely objectively think about, you know, things like this versus, because there's a, just like this huge part of me. Like, I don't want a lot of you being like, yeah, you know, we, we, I like it a lot, but like a giant part of me feels like I love it. And like, again, a part of it, though, was like watching how it was like the gateway for my kids to the Mighty Ducks movies. Like my kids, they had seen the Mighty Ducks with me during like other times, like maybe we put it on in the car ride on a road trip or I was watching it, but they didn't care. And then they watched the first episode. No, we watch all three movies before the first episode of Game Changers. And it was when they saw the first episode of Game Changers where my son's like, whoa, like it, it came the ducks movies came alive to him and so like i'll always be grateful for that but you know there's just i'd like them to tap more into the nostalgia like in cobra kai like the song cruel summer by banana rama that it plays when daniel goes to school for the first time they use that song when the kids are going to high school in cobra kai and it's like okay what you know is there music that can it would be nice to see that touched upon you know a little bit to a lot more yeah for sure i and i think there's just even in some of the way that the like the music is really <clears throat> key. and like you said the score uh to all three movies is awesome i mean i've <laughs> i've used i use that part of the theme for the intro for the the mighty 90s from the beginning because i love it i love it it, it gets me hyped um and it's just so nostalgic but like they i even like there's parts of the movies like uh when <laughs> like they play in my head you know it's like banks he's on the he's on the breakaway blah, 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 blah. and it's like yeah um or you can hear it was that mendoza he can really fly and all of that stuff yeah but like you hear the music that goes with it and it brings the tension up and i know it's kind of in like a 90s kind of way yeah. i wish that they did some of that in 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 game changes where it brought the tension up like when they're playing hockey it's a little bit like it can it sucks the energy out a little bit and maybe it's because they're trying to make it a bit more realistic uh to what what peewee hockey would be like and that's cool i'm with that totally but at the same time i want to see 
you know, like one of the kids do like a Banks type, you know, twist and turn around someone and all that sort of other stuff. But I, I think it's like you said, COVID uh, affected it a lot. You can kind of tell that. I love the fact that they're doing it. I really enjoy it. I'm sure if my son was, you know, old enough to sort of digest it properly, he's just a baby, um, that he, he, I'd probably be having the same sort of experience that you're having where you can see it through through their eyes, you know? Yeah. But you're so right when you think about like the music in a movie, how it gets you. Like uh, I, I listened to your Cool Running um, podcast uh, just yesterday. And that final race when, you know, they're loading in and the one commentator says, oh, what the heck, go champs. And they play that. Dun, dun. It's like, I mean, start crying. Give me the goosebumps. Like, I don't care who sees me. Like, there's nobody that I'm willing to not shed these tears for right now because this is a beautiful moment and the music helps it so much. And it'd be like, as the don't bothers, which going back to you and Theo's podcast, like, I don't know, I laugh so many times. Like, you have to have him on the the way you two interacted was just awesome. Like I loved it. It was such a treat to listen to, but I can say the same, the one you did with Aaron and Connor, like I learned so much and that's why I love this podcast, but thank you, man. Um, and, but it's as, also, it's also good talking to you that you've got a great energy. I'm really, really enjoying it. And uh, I can't wait to talk about your backdrop as well, but yes, keep going. Um, yeah. I mean, it's such a treat to be able to talk about these things in the way we are because most people either you know could care less or they care to a minimal degree or they're just like that's weird you know what I mean and that's fine they can keep their attention and it doesn't bother me you know they can have their opinion like cool but it's great to have this like like like-minded conversation for people who are like you know what d2 changed my life or Mm -hmm. you know the karate kid means something to me more than just like I'm bored you know, what am I going to do while I'm eating this bowl of popcorn? It, it means something. But yeah, the don't bothers as they're getting better and as they're starting to, you know, play, like you want to see like the music pump in a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Like when you go watch the Ducks versus the Hawks, the music plays so much. Mm-hmm. Like when the Ducks have the puck, it's like that. Do, 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 do. And when the Hawks have the pucks, it's like, and I look at your McGill jersey and all I think is like the music, like, dun, 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 like the bad guys have it. And so the music gets darker and more intense. And I would like to see more of that stuff with Game Changers. Yeah. I, I Give us some I, good vibrations while the kids are making pancakes, like from Marky Mark or, <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? So can we not get any like boom there it is by the tag team at some point like yeah. just little nods even if it's like okay that they put in there saying like this is for the og fans that they're gonna yeah. get like oh man um it's for but my parents. wife also is uh, what it's for the parents like watching along with the kids like the, yeah the, absolutely got, yeah you just need to up that percentage just a little bit so that it it goes both ways i think what you're saying about the music is so important and i don't think i've really considered it uh to that degree as much as i have right right now so i think you're totally right and you know what also they, they're not doing which uh, like i'm thinking about now is during those games you've got the music but then they do that sound effect of the like where they're like you know on the yes. park and then they're sort of moving it but that adds that cinema i know obviously they're adding that in post-production but they adds that adds that uh like tension to it and uh it, it's like got that crisp crispness i went off on this massive tangent on my instagram story uh, a few weeks ago saying that saying about how i thought that the hockey was shot better in the movies which are you know what coming up to almost 30 years ago like well the first one anyway yeah which is crazy um but uh, but i mean it's not that it's necessarily shot better it's that they've added in the the tension the the music uh all of the sound effects it just feels like a, a fulfilled package and it's like we've been trained to see that that's how hockey should be in these movies and then they've kind of switched it up so I mean, and they have to evolve and it has to change. And, and I get that. So, I mean, I, we, we, yeah, we could, we could go on. We could talk about this for hours, but what we want to know is about, is more about you. So firstly, your backdrop is very impressive. We have to talk it through. I mean, you have oh, a yeah. stormtrooper behind you. <laughs> What's going on? 
so this so my best friend who is like an uncle to my kids he actually gave my son the stormtrooper but uh my wife just put it here one day while she was cleaning and it just resides here i'm not the biggest star wars fan my wife loves it she doesn't she, my wife doesn't really collect anything but i mean she can watch the movie countless times um she knows so much her knowledge of star wars is so rich um and so she was like thought it was really cool and so she just parked it down here because this is kind of like we say this is like the man cave and this is my home office but really this is where like we watch movies we just spend time together we work out um mainly my wife works out <laughs> um and so this, that's where this that's where the stormtroopers from it's awesome so it is i mean I, it's, it's a bit more difficult to tell because it's behind you but is is it full scale or a little bit less than scale it's, yeah i'd say it's full scale but i mean i'm i think i'm taller than it so i don't know how big a or tall a stormtrooper should be who knows let's let's <laughs> say let's say a little bit shorter than you that works um yeah so i'm six foot so i mean i mean i guess you know five ten stormtrooper wouldn't be too unusual no that works yeah yeah <laughs> okay and then up the top here i i can see many pot funkos all right so what what are uh, what what like ones have you got so i have we have a lot of sports ones um which i'll just you know we'll kind of gloss over since this is a movie prop but i'm from the massachusetts area so i love teams like the patriots and the red sox so a lot of that is that stuff and then we go right into the karate kid um we got daniel mr miyagi johnny and then we got Home Alone, Jurassic Park. Home Alone, love um, that. I love Lucy, which I, I'm like a big I love Lucy fan, which a lot of people think that's my wife's because my wife has some up here too. Like, I guess she does collect pops, but not like a crazy person. Um, she she loves the movie Aquaman, so she has a bunch of those. Mm -hmm. um, she ha she loves the Wonder Woman movie, so she has a bunch of those. Um, one of my favorite bands growing up, um, and to this day is still the Police, and I have the pop funkers of those. I love um, the 60s group, the Monkees, and I have some bobbleheads from there. And then I have a couple of Bruce Lee ones and just random ones. Awesome. I love it. I love it. That's so, really cool. We only buy ones that we legitimately like care about, like either the movie, like we don't just go buy them to buy them. So we um, have the Ducks ones. I have the Ducks ones pre-ordered, so hopefully they'll be here soon awesome that's cool i i've i've seen some of it like posted on on instagram so do they them who have they got it's goldberg bombay banks goldberg and conway and fulton and usually with pops like they'll release the initial line and then there'll be like either the d2 variant like they put them in the d2 cost uh, uniforms or they'll you know i'm hoping they'll do like a doubles pack of like Connie and Guy or like an Averman. Uh, there's so many that they could do. So a Jesse Hall. So we'll see what happens. But the first wave are just those five. And it looks like I've seen people post on Instagram, like they're loving their pops. And it always says like, we love the Mighty Ducks in Australia or whatever. But all the sites over here still say like shipping late May, shipping early June. So not exactly sure what's up with it, but um, hopefully soon. Wow, that's that's really cool. Uh, I mean, just on the on the topic there, I just just because I was thinking about this earlier today, I've made a conscious decision that I uh, I feel I feel like my my favorite jerseys and everything from the Ducks movies are <clears throat> the ones like these ones, the ones from from D one. I'm not sure how I feel anymore about the ones from when they put on the new logo, you know, like the duck. I mean, it's a, it's a super cool logo. Like I love it. I think it's awesome. But I also now from like my, you know, older perspective is like, well, they, they were just selling us in to get into, you know, the, the Anaheim ducks, the, the team. I mean, how, how do you feel about, about that? I mean, which you, what's your like quintessential favorite ducks Jersey? Oh man. Um, I've been thinking about this a lot just um long before you and I were talking tonight, just the, like the last couple of weeks, just listening to your podcast and you know, the backdrop you have with the McGill jersey and the Goldberg jersey is undeniable. And kind of, and I'm not just saying this to be relatable, to be like, oh, we agree, because you know, it's life's more interesting when we disagree. But I do agree with you. The D2 jersey when the you know ducks fly together and they walk out. I feel like 
in some ways it's like the least creative of all the jerseys in the Ducks movies. It was essentially like Donald Duck with hockey sticks, you know? <laughs> and um, it's still a cool jersey, but it, to me, the Mighty Ducks is still the green jersey. Now, granted, I mean, I already told you how I feel about P2, what it means to me, how much it means to me, um, the time and effort I give, I've, you know, given of my life to it. So that's not like a, this is not a site on, you know, D2, but the green jersey just to me, as far as the Ducks jersey just resonates with me. But my, you know, I, I'm going to go out and say that I think the Hawks jersey is my favorite. I just think from the red eyes, it just, it, it just, it could be a professional team's jersey. It would be um, the most awesome team's jersey. Like, I I mean, well, I, just just to go, just to touch back on your point uh, just before that, I, I, I have to say I love the moment, and I always have, which I know is very unrealistic, but I love it when they switch jerseys. Like, it, at halftime, it gets me so hyped. Like, I, I love it, um, and I love the whole feel of it. I guess what I, what I feel is that that jersey the, with the, the duck uh crossbone whatever yeah it's like that became its own thing outside of the movies you know it became its whole a whole separate thing where people could have those jerseys and it's not necessarily connected to the movies you know like i mean we feel that way but it became its own its own thing where when you've got like the hawks jerseys or the original ducks jerseys or whatever it's like that is a qu- quintessentially that's connected to the to the original movie so it's like i i, I like it i i still think it's awesome um but i just um yeah i just prefer the ones that are in the original movie and then yes the hawks one awesome i mean you've got the hat on that's really cool i haven't seen that hat before where what's the deal with that there's a company called beauty status hockey and uh, my best friend actually texted me he said dude if you don't buy this i don't know you and it was the district five banner which i can show you really fast um and they have a collection called the Triple D Collection, which is all like Mighty Duck inspired, but it's probably too big. I don't know if you can see it all, but yeah, that's awesome. Um, I think it's like a three by five, and at the bottom it says 92, 93 state champs. Um, and I also have one for the Hawks that says 91, 92 state champs. And they just have a really fun um, line of Mighty Duck stuff. And it doesn't look tacky, it doesn't look forced. It's almost like, as my wife would call it, it's like not on the nose, like it's subtle. Like for someone who doesn't know, they wouldn't, it doesn't scream like I'm wearing a Mighty Ducks movie piece, mm-hmm. which I don't care. I mean, I'll gladly, you know, rock that all day, every day. But um, the shirts are fun. It's not like in your face. It's a little bit more subtle, like that more like a hardcore fan, like you would pick up on um, or an Aaron or a Connor, et cetera. Yeah, I'm all about that. I mean, actually, I have one on right here, which is... Uh, I love that one. Yeah, which is... Uh, it says uh, South Central uh, <laughs> Los Angeles, like, roll, what does it say? Street hockey. And it's got the, uh, you know, from, like, D2. And this is from Selly Hockey, which uh, C-E-L-L-Y. And they are doing some awesome stuff. Like, they're doing... Loads of sweatshirts like this, and then like the snapback. So you, you, I know that you must have seen this, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like um, the like there's in their site and everything. It is really cool. I really like. They're doing like the Trinidad Tobago uh, hats and and all of that. That yeah, they're they're but killing it as well. That sweatshirt is awesome. You need to do like an Instagram story and play like whoop there it is because that's when they play that song. Yeah. And this is like the third time I mentioned that song in this podcast. So people are going to think I'm some like weird, like tag team fan that could care less about the group, but it's just an awesome movie and an awesome song and an awesome movie. But it's perfect. I love that. Yeah, song. I love that sweatshirt. Uh, uh, wow. Yeah. Thank you. Well, yeah, people get involved. I love the hat. Is, and so is, is your t-shirt from that as well? Yeah. It's just matching Hawks. I decided to go matchy matchy. Um, I have a couple other pieces from them. I have a, they have like, Hans Hockey Shop, Gordon Bombay Hockey School. They have Eden Hall stuff. They have a this is called a cake eater shirt. Um, so they, they have a District Five line of like, or not? It's part of the collection, but like District Five like hats and hoodies and T-shirts, and it's just a lot of fun. Yeah, I love that. Very. And cool. It's cool that 
this stuff is available now because as much as I love the ducks back in, you know, 1994 and all that stuff, you couldn't get any of it. I mean, you could literally get the soundtrack on cassette or CD in the VHS. Um, so it's cool now that we get have, we're starting to get access to these things, but I love what I love about your sweatshirt is it's for the OG fans. Like it means something to me that your sweatshirt means a lot to me walk outside walk around london and most people aren't going to think twice yeah you know yeah i love that yeah. as well that's Did my you... favorite that's my favorite things um and, and i love that i love that with props as well so to bring it back to props like uh yeah i have a um i have a basketball bag that's uh that's from one tree hill so people People that have listened to any of these will know that I, I love One Tree Hill. And I have the bag for, uh, a bag from it that's from a thing in the show that's like screen used. But unless you really, really know that show, you have no idea like what the logos on it mean or anything like that. So it's just a bag. And I just use it as my basketball bag. But I love it because I'm the only one that know. Like I know that this is like, to me anyway, like a special bag, but no one else does. And it's like having that little... I don't know it's kind of it's kind of like comforting if anything it's kind of like a little comfort blanket of like no oh, this is that thing that means a lot to me you know when something means so much to you like these movies mean to us or these shows or these movies mean to us it just I don't know I find it soothing like kind, kind of you said like a blanket like to own a piece of it um, and that's not to say like it needs to be screen used or screen worn because, you know, let's be honest, it's very expensive and I would never, I think this is like one of the greatest hobbies someone could have and I would never, you know, um, discourage anyone from getting into it because they couldn't go out and buy a screen use item like there's a really cool replica stuff out but mm. it just you love the movie and you want to kind of own a little piece of it. and. Yeah. Um, so I totally get what you're saying and just and it's not to show off like that bag you're not like hey I have the bag from Wintry Hill but it's for you and that's what it that's what matters like this this stuff like the stuff that's in my room the stuff that you know I can show you and stuff it's not for anybody like I'm excited to give this to my son one day like mm. you know you know we'll see what my daughter wants out of any of this but <laughs> I'm excited as you know as of right now like I'm excited to give it to him you know Mm. Um, I hope he, and I believe if he stays on this path, he'll cherish it like I do. So yeah. that's really important to me. That's really cool. And that's a nice thing, you know, to, to share with him and the, to like share the the passion and, and yeah, totally. I, I completely agree. Like the, the stuff is not to, not to show off with it. I mean, I guess it might, it might feel that way uh, having these in this backdrop, but you know, I like, this is uh, where I do all of this, but this is also my, like home office as well where I do my work out of and I never put on like a fake background or anything like even when I'm in like serious meetings I'm like well yeah. this is who I am this is what I love and I think most people probably think that they're replicas or think that they're not real or whatever and that doesn't bother me because it doesn't matter um they're for but, you yeah like I know that they're real and and whatever but it doesn't matter you know what other people think but um they're kind of I just think it's cool. And I think that, I mean, the whole point of the, this show with mad props is that I love seeing other people's things that they are passionate about, you know, and just sharing in that sort of excitement. And it's never to be like, like showy offy, like, Hey, look at all this cool stuff I have, because to most people, people would think, well, who cares? I don't care about that. Like, yeah, you've got this, you know, doesn't matter. Um, but to people that, that do care about it, it's like sharing that, I don't know, that that shared excitement, I guess. One thing I wanted to, I was going to tell you, um, and I think I was just going to message it to you. Um, then, you know, we said, hey, let's talk tonight. Is like listening to your podcast with Connor and Aaron, and you guys have this insane collection of stuff. And it never, one thing that I appreciate is like how generous you guys are about like kind of like sharing it with all the Ducks fans. Um, and it never comes across as like, look what I got and ha ha. And, you know, a lot of times when people are at the top of their game and something, whether it's a hobby or a sport or work, people get a little big headed, but not you guys. I mean, you guys are like, just, um, I just see 
three guys who have pure joy owning these things, but they don't want to just lock it up for themselves being like, well, it's for me. It's like, you want to be like, you know, learn more. And I get to learn about these jerseys and how they were made. And that is like so special to me. You know what I mean? And that's why I love this podcast. Um, and it's a very, you guys are very giving the, you know, particularly, you know, I'm talking, I know I'm referencing the Ducks fans that have been on this, including yourself, but in just in all movies too, that you guys have talked about, but it's just great, man. Well, you're incredibly kind. Thank you. Too kind, I'm sure, but uh, no. I, I appreciate it. Thank you. My wife um, doesn't have a big like threshold for me, like embellishing or like BSing around. And if she was sitting with me right now, she would just be like, that's truly how he feels. Oh, you know, if she did, if she was sitting here, she'd be like, why are you saying that? You don't feel that way. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> like you're, you're, you're raging with jealousy over these guys. Like, don't say that, but no, she would be like, you know, um, he truly feels, you know, gratitude. And I do. Well, I, I, I feel gratitude to you. So I, I appreciate it. And, and the thing is, um, so, I mean, Connor is, is a great advocate for paying it forward. He always says that. And I, and I fully agree with that is that like, we kind of see it as we may have these things now, but we but they will go round like we kind of trade them off i mean these one i mean like i've said i can't remember now if i've said it while we're recording or be, or before we were recording but at one point i had five of these jerseys and i only have two left uh because because i let them go and i let them go to be able to uh you know to get something different you know to sort of trade it around mm -hmm. it's kind of like a revolving door you know so i'm sure one of these things are going to end up with you at some point you oh. know from one of us so um yeah that you know on one hand like that's great if that's be so be it but at the same time like it doesn't bother me like i'm blessed to learn you know th this isn't just looking at a picture being like look what he has on his wall like it's learning about these jerseys learning you know i go to connor's page and i didn't know blake bears was a real school like that like blows my mind you know and so it's just um you know it, it's just you know great and keep up the good work man well thank you you know, I know you it know, sounds like i'm signing off but i'm not <laughs> no 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 well you know the the blake bears I'm not sure if Connor got it. He probably did. <laughs> Let's be honest. I mean, he has he has them all uh, almost. Well, hopefully one day he will have them all. But uh, there was one that was on eBay. It was before I moved house, so it was it must have been over two years ago. Um, and yeah, they just turn up on eBay. Like and that one was maybe like I don't know, like two hundred dollars or something, and it was. Um, yeah, it was like a really good one. I like I think that it's just being lucky with when they turn up. Like for like I the the rarest one that I had uh that Connor now has was I had Goldberg's D5 jersey, but that D5 is in before they became the ducks, like the actual handwritten one. And that one was um like it wasn't it wasn't tagged on eBay or uh, as like a Mighty Ducks jersey. Like the wording wasn't quite right, so I, like I don't think people sort of found it. And sometimes it's it's like just constantly having a look. And that one was just in someone's basement. Like it sold on I think it's called Leland's, which is a like a, a sport auction site in like two thousand and two. And then the person just had it in their basement for like 18 years or something. And then they got it out and put it on eBay and now it's back in circulation. And then, you know, already it went to me and now it's with Connor and uh, yeah. So they it's, just, they show up. It's funny. Like um, I'm sure you know this, but like in 2008 or nine, there was like a big dump of ducks props on eBay mm -hmm. from the socks to the helmets to the jerseys. And but that just so happened to be the time, like we were, my wife and I were married for one year, just bought our first house. My wife just took her dream job working for our church with the teen girls, took a massive pay cut. We're talking about having a baby, just got a dog. So at that point, like, even though everything was dirt cheap, looking back, I didn't have those $40 for like socks. <laughs> you know what I mean? That like was using the Mighty Ducks movie or 60 bucks for a helmet. Now I'd be like, I'd take out an extra credit card just to be like, Brrr! 
you know, <laughs> mine, 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 mine. But back then it was like, I just don't, you know, it's just not um, to happen right now. But it's always fun when you see those things pop up and just like, even if it's in someone's collection, not like meant for me, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But it's coming though. They're, they will, as soon as I see one, like the next time I see one, uh, we, we, it's going to happen. You're going to, I'm going to have show us show us show us show us right so let's show us what you what you do have because you do have you have props um yeah 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 so um my probably you know my my treasure as far as like you know materialistic item goes is i have the d2 skates um from lester averman's d2 skates and these i love them so much and it's so funny because you know um, the day I got them in the mail, you know, we put on the song and my wife recorded me opening it. And, you know, for her, I think it was just kind of like a silly, fun moment. And for me, it's like an emotional moment. Like when I opened the box and I had timed it when the, I use a song from D3, you know, these are from D2. And when that, it was like that, do, 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 do. <laughs> and I just felt like just pure joy, not like, like, you know, I'm awesome that I have these. I just felt pure joy. Like this is my childhood. That I own part of something that just has meant so much to me. And just to um, learn about the skates, like, I don't know if you can see inside, but on the tongue, it says Averman. And that was written by their, their hockey trainer, Jack White. And on the bottom, um, it says Matt on each skate and like graffiti blocks. But recently, Matt posted an Instagram post about that how their hockey coach wrote all their names in graffiti on all their gear. So just to see that like line up to something he would say just means like, wow, like, you know, this is so cool. So awesome, um, man. I mean, what, so, what, what size are they? Like, are they, are you able to like put them on or they're too small? Or I haven't tried. I feel like his foot is bigger than mine, even though I've met Matt a couple of times and he's like, you know, I'm much taller than he is. Um, but I haven't tried. Um, I wanted these skates when I was playing hockey. And but they were like $200 at the time, which my dad was like, no way. So it's kind of like, that's kind of cool too. like, I wanted these skates because of the Mighty Ducks. And now I own these skates that belong to a Mighty Duck. Um, but it's funny, just kind of you were talking, we were talking about how a lot of people won't care or like, you know, most people will be like, why do you want those or wait what are those because i mean these skates have been well worn let me tell you i mean there's cracks in this section i mean there's scuffs everywhere i believe he's worn these up until recently too um at some d2 25th anniversary events so um you know they're just incredible but people will be like my mom will be like well you know uh I have a pair of slippers I'm throwing out. Do you want them by chance? You know, and it's like, like, you know, and I get it and it's funny, but like, you know, a treasure to me is other people are like, I just don't get it, you know, but that's fine. They don't need to get it. Um, but to me, it's a part of my childhood right here. Um, and they mean a lot. I think and, it's awesome, man. I mean, how, how do you display them? Like, where do they live? So I was going to ask you how I should display them because right now they're just, they live in the box that they came in. I got them last Labor Day weekend. And um, so I, there's different options. Like I know like we could do a bubble frame for a guy who's framed some of my jerseys. And I have a stadium seat from my favorite baseball team. And they, they're they like, well, we could put them in a cool like box and drill them in and then have a picture of the actor or the cast. And I'm like, mm. but I love being able to like, you know, see that like the graffiti writing, you know, and yeah. maybe I just take a bunch of pictures of it and put them in the frame and say, Hey, you know what, this is at the bottom of the skates. Like, what would you do with them? I don't know. It's, it's difficult. Yeah. I mean, the, the person that did the framing for, for my jerseys, he he's done, uh, I've seen that they do like bubble framing for like Maradona's football boots or, uh, you know, like Mike Tyson's boxing gloves or, you know, and, and actually stuff from Indiana Jones. I think there was like something that's like in the bubble frame. And I think that's cool. But like, I, again, like we said earlier, it might have been before we were recording, but 
I I kind of miss that it can't take them out of the frame. So I don't know. Maybe yeah. if there's a way that you could have it so that like both ways where they're sort of framed, but at the same time you can like lift the lid off and still have them. Like I I don't know. That's what we're leaning towards. Like there's like we have a craft store and I'd like to find one and see if there's like a UV protected one from like a more of like a display mm. company. But the idea is like almost like a football helmet like an American football helmet that yeah. is pretty big and I can find like little stands for the skates. And, um, I know you have them, but I got the puck from Aaron and just display this with the T2, like the logo that we talked about, the crossbones one, the cross hockey six, like display those couple of pucks with it. Like That's definitely cool. want to show it up because I mean, admittedly for people who come into my house and they just see very used skates in a box, it's kind of like, why, like what, what's so special about these? So I know if displayed in the right way, you know, they could be like a real presentation piece, but I mean, I don't want to be corny or, you know, make myself sound like, you know, I'm just some super fan, but there's a lot of times I'll just, cause I work from home, like 100% of the time where I'll just be, you know, on the, and I'm work meeting or, you know, in the normal workday stress, I'll look up and I'll see the skates and I'll just be like, I just feel grateful. Um, yeah that's why i keep these in here that's why like i mean, I, we were talking i mean you're saying you've seen that one but when i was talking to theo we were saying about your workspace if because we mo so many people work from home now i, I was working from home like pre-covid i was living quarantine yeah. covid life for a good few years before COVID. Yeah, same here <laughs> same here uh, my my boss and my wife actually works on my team she was like if you ask me we just waste time commuting and getting ready and going to lunch and talking about, you know, the basketball game from the night before, like, let's just, we can work during these times. And so she's like, everyone work from home, you know? And so this has been my life for the last many years. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I'm really accustomed to it now. I mean, I, I know that there are benefits to being more social and, and all of those things. Um, but yeah, but so when I, when we moved house a couple of years ago, I had like a, a room, like a home office, but we, it was in like a smaller house and a smaller room and whatever. So when we moved here, this room was just empty. So I completely like designed it, how basically like I allowed my inner child to come out and create his perfect room. And now I just get to live in it. <laughs> and, um, I mean, and it's perfect and it's done well. It's not too much. It's not too little. It, I mean, I can only see the jerseys and the lost toys. Um, <laughs> figurines, so, figurines, <laughs> figurines. Yes, uh, my I'm wife joking. will be like, my wife will, you know, sometimes just to give me a hard time, be like, "Hey," like when you know, friend friends, like your karate kid dolls have come. <laughs> <laughs> I said to my wife earlier, I said, um, "When our son, so like I said, he's only a baby at the moment, but when he's older, I was like, I'm gonna have to get a lock on this on this door, like <laughs> just in case." He has his friends around and they're like, hey, let's open these toys. And I'm just like, no. We, we've, we've had that problem before. Like I had like little sports figures that, you know, I've had out of the box and then some other things that are in the box. And I get it, like little kids and they see toys. Yeah, and, of course, yeah. You know, and then you don't want to be that jerk that's mad at the four-year-old that just busted yeah. your figurine or just open your pop. And you're kind of like, you yeah. know, I'm looking at my wife like, do something and it's like do you want to go upstairs and play with like you know teddy's toys teddy's my son and i'm like you know but you you also know like wow if i come across as mad yeah. people are definitely talking about me <laughs> you know what i mean like that guy yeah. got mad at our four-year-old for opening a toy that yeah. is made for four-year-olds yeah um, for sure for sure but, but yeah. um another prop i have if you want to go back to the prop yeah, world for sure let's get it is i got this scarf from jane plank who plays tammy duncan in the mighty ducks and she said she actually wore this um under the champ in the championship game against the hawks it was under her jersey um so it's just you know a cool piece to have um just i really like that yeah and it's a pretty big scarf and she signed her name on it and i think i want to frame this with like you know have this framed and maybe like a picture of the cast underneath it or a picture of her um, i really like that logo um like we don't see that one very often i know that's like 
uh, from probably from the cover of the first movie. Yeah, that's that's really cool. I really like that. It, it, so it's just a really um, it's a simple piece, but it's just another piece of the movie. Um, it would be cool if it was seen on screen, but at the same time, like just the actress herself telling me about the piece. It was just again, you know, for most people, it's like. I have better looking scarves than that. And it's like, well, cool. But, you know, this one means a lot to me. Um, yeah, that's really cool. Um, when you got into prop collecting yourself, like, or did you have just so many questions of like, well, how much do I pay for this? And mm -hmm. what is this worth? And am I getting taken advantage of? Or oh, am, yeah. I, so am, I, am, I, am I insulting these people? <laughs> My yeah, totally. I mean, the to just get the the first one I was getting was this Goldberg one, and to get, I I have like a chain of emails that about fifty like five zero emails of just like I was asking so many questions about because I didn't know it was the first prop I'd ever bought, and so I was questioning like the validity. It has like the the certificate of authenticity from like the the wardrobe department, and I was like questioning that and questioning so many different things but i was lucky the guy was um really really nice and we and i and we were just conversing as fans about the movies and everything and he was like screenshotting and screen matching and everything and it's quite fortunate because like this i mean i've i've said it a few different times and connor's said it that these usa jerseys are the easiest ones to screen match because the two stars on the back are at slightly different angles on all yeah. of the jerseys so it's perfect like you can literally freeze frame and be like that's my one that's that's not mine that must be the the you know stunt double and whatever um so it kind of yeah but there was a million questions and then to do with the price um and again i, I keep bringing him up but connor gave me some great advice about that at one point and just said you know it's just about what it means to you like as into somebody else it means nothing like it's li literally you know they it could be worth 20 dollars or something and then to somebody else it could be worth like ten thousand dollars like it's it literally it can go anywhere in between um so i guess the, the the end of the day the question is is how much does it mean to you literally you know for for the money you know you know i'm still pretty new i mean i got these skates were delivered labor day weekend which is in america in first weekend in september and the scarf came like a week later so i kind of got like this baptism under fire <laughs> um and so but i'm still very much new into the world of like screen use props and um, one thing that Connor recently said to me was just to enjoy the process and like have fun with it. And he said, um, and I always appreciate when, you know, people speak truth um, into my life and he's like, it's just stuff. And it's so, it's so right because it's easy to, if I'm being honest, you get these skates, you get the scarf and it becomes this like, what's next? You know what I mean? And you start <laughs> to like kind of go nutty and you get stressed out when there's nothing there and you get hopeful when maybe there's a rumor of something being there. And it's just like, it's just stuff, you know, mm. um, I have wife and kids. That I'm very blessed to have, I have a home to pay for. I have a job. I have responsibilities. Yeah. I have, I have friends to be there for, you know, I have parents to, um, visit. And so I can't be so consumed. So I really appreciated that piece of advice from him recently. Um, yeah, for sure. And yeah, it yeah. is, it's just, it's, it's, it's just stuff. But I, I think the most, the, the most, the best part of it apart from receiving it that is the best part when you open it like you were saying oh yeah unboxing, that's like an amazing part but the the best part is the chase so to speak especially if they're things that aren't for sale and you've managed to get to get them by finding the person and sort of you know working out a deal or whatever so like uh i don't have it down here but i've got um fulton reed's uh tracksuit his team usa tracksuit that's and incredible Oh, I, that was that was like uh I and mean, not him specifically i mean i i love his character he's one of my favorites uh but i just want that was my one thing i wanted i wanted that tracksuit um like didn't matter what character but then when i found out it was his character i thought that was probably the best scenario because like you i'm like a tall guy 
And I thought, well, you know, the, these are, you know, adolescent kids at the time, but he is the tall guy. He's the tall one on the team. And so that'd be perfect. And then I found out later that actually he's not very tall. He's probably like five, eight, five, nine or something. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, but I got lucky that uh, it's like nineties style fitting, which is kind of my style of clothing anyway. That's like that sort of baggy, uh, sort Loose of and baggy. Yeah. And, um, yeah, that, that, but I, I got that through, through Connor. So, um, Connor connected me to someone that, that had it and it wasn't for sale. Um, but, uh, I, I spoke to him and it was going towards a, it was going towards a good thing. Uh, it was around when Sean Weiss, uh, was, you know, have going, going through his, you know, his situations, which, you yeah. know, um, thankfully, you know, it looks like he's way beyond that. And that's so awesome. That's so awesome. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. And, um, so the, like the proceeds of that was going towards that. So it was like, well, I, I didn't buy it from Sean Weiss, by the way, just to put that out there. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. it was just from, from someone that was helping to raise money to, to go towards it. And, uh, so yeah, so it was kind of like this is awesome. This is you know it's helping to raise money for a good thing, but also, but but my point is, it was like well that was kind of almost that was more exciting than just bidding for something on eBay because it was going through all of these you know pathways of emailing someone and and all this sort of stuff and and then haggling you know that's kind of a thing uh, of like well you know. Yeah, so it's it's all of that stuff is really exciting as much as receiving the thing. It's like the thrill of the chase. Absolutely, I'm horrible with confrontation though, so I hate the whole like. By the way, like, do you want to sell that? You know what I mean? And if they were like, no, I'd be like, I'm so sorry for asking. <laughs> you know, <laughs> but I know, I know that's part of it. Um, and so, I just kind of, you know, I can't say that I'm always perfect about this, but as much as I can try to promise myself to just enjoy the process, you know, and when yeah. nothing comes around, nothing comes around. And if something does, then, you know, you'd be happy with it. You, you know, you see what happens, you know, you kick the tires on it. Um, and so something that's given me so much joy, I don't want it to all of a sudden become like this headache in my life, you yeah. know? And as long as people like you and Connor and Aaron and whoever else has these collectibles, and as long as you guys are just like sharing, uh, sharing them on like social media and information about them, like that's that in a lot of ways, that's just as good, you know? Um, yeah, I love it. When, when I see, I mean, Connor is the guy that's like killing it. So, I mean, for anyone that doesn't know, we keep referencing him. His tag yeah. is Jersey Chasing on Instagram and uh he has the biggest collection I know of uh of Mighty Ducks jerseys of like all the, his his end game is to try and have one jersey from every team that's featured, which is awesome. And he's got he's got a ton. Um but like what what he said and then, you know, same for me and same for Aaron and and, you know, for you with the skates, I'm sure, is that if anyone's listening, watching, and they're, they're thinking about getting something or they want some advice or they want to, like, reference it against something to see if it's screen accurate or not. I mean, it's not to say that any of us are, are experts or anything like that, but, you know, we'd Definitely love to, me. we'd love, yeah, we'd love to speak to you about it and love to try and help and, or just, you know, we love the conversation. Like, this is... Like, so the thing is with the prop stuff is, um, I don't, I don't really imagine Well, I say that, <laughs> I mean, like, I was going to say, I don't really imagine probably getting anything else. Um, because I, I don't know, I kind of, I'm happy with what I have, but then I say that. And then I imagine I, if I see something, I'm going to want it, but, um, it's, I enjoy having these conversations about them, uh, just as much is having them and sit and like you said and seeing other people's props and like seeing your backdrop there and stuff like i love it because it's like wow that's i love the way you've set it up i love the shelving like i'm just a fan of it you know my wife my so i accumulate this stuff and my wife puts it together <laughs> um so she's so this is like my room i can kind of do whatever i can put whatever i want in it but you know truth is is like I'm always like okay well what would you do with it where would you put it and she's like I'll just do it for you <laughs> um but like 
I just think that, you know, I don't know, like it's, it's just a fun hobby and let's keep it fun. And that's something like, as long as I can keep that, this is a hobby I could see myself, you know, doing the rest of my life. And when it's time to give up something, I, I hope that I have the mindset of being like, you know what, it's time to give it up or it's, you know, the, this, like right now, I can't imagine ever giving up the skates because it's my first screen use piece from my favorite movie. But, you know, if I ever did, I'd want it. I hope I can lovingly give it up. You know what I mean? Being like, man, the next fan gets to enjoy these like I did. That That's my hope, you know? Um, yeah. Well, you will. You will. I mean, yeah, probably not with them. But like you will like there's things that you accumulate and it's like I actually... I don't like I like I like this but I don't love this like I can let this go to trade it off for something else and that's kind of how like I felt like there's like at one point I was really proud of this at one point but you know it, it I it doesn't mean anything anymore but I had one of Goldberg's jerseys from each of the three movies and I thought that's yeah. kind of cool to have one from each but then um like the third movie it does, like I enjoy that movie, yes, but it doesn't mean that much to me. It's like the first two are what means something to me, and there's there's people out there that that it does mean more to. So that one's actually crazy because that one uh, I I sold to Connor, and then Connor sold it to Aaron. So I so it went from I bought it from someone in the Philippines. So I bought it from some, an American that moved down to the Philippines. <laughs> And then he sent it to me in the UK. I then sent it to Connor back in the US and then Connor sent it back to Aaron, which is in the UK. So that, that Jersey has been like around the world, um, yes. but you pay it forward. Cause it's like, well, you know, that, that, but you know, I used the money from that to buy something else that, you know, like I, that, that I do love, you know? So it's like, yeah, it's just, it's just a cool, fun thing. You know what? I think there's like, it's great to have those like couple pieces that are like, you know what, this piece is special to me because it's my first or this was my favorite character from the movie. So I'm hanging on to this, but then there's like, you know, that side of it where it's like, I don't want to become that hoarder. Mm. You know, I want someone else. If there's another mighty duck fan or another Cobra Kai or karate kid fan out there, like I want them to feel what I'm feeling right now. Yeah, exactly that. I mean, well, tell me what, um, from like, Cobra Kai, right, from Cobra Kai, Karate Kid, and uh, the Mighty Ducks, what would be, like, the the, the be-all, end-all prop? If you could have any one jersey oh. prop, anything, what would it be? Gosh. Um, if we're just talking, like, lunacy, like, good luck. Uh, the car that Mr. Miyagi gives Daniel, which I know actually belongs to Ralph Macchio. Yeah, Johnny Lawrence's like motorbike when they like first like drive up and Daniel and you know Allie are playing like soccer on the beach. Um, Johnny's red leather jacket, um, the championship trophy that they Johnny hands to Daniel at the end, which also belongs to Ralph Macchio. So I don't think yeah. I'm getting any of those anytime soon. Um, from the Ducks, gosh, um, any screen New Jersey by like a major character. I know like that's a little bit like you know it sounds like a little bit easier to come by but um you know i feel like i'd be just as grateful for d germain's d3 jersey as i would adam banks's district five jersey um oh that's the one right there <laughs> well, yeah that, that one that one actually went for auction um a few years ago in calabasas in california like they his his district d5 it went on like a public auction but you can find it if you google it you can find it online um what did it go for not as much as you'd think uh i think it went a couple thousand dollars i think it'd be worth a lot more now see that's one of those ones where like i want to be a good steward of my money i want to be responsible but if i saw that jersey today for a couple thousand dollars like you know, not to come across as like a rich person, because I'm absolutely not. But I would just be like, you know what, I will make the sacrifices needed to, you know what I mean? I won't out eat out for the next six months. I want whatever it takes. <laughs> I'll sell some um, blood. Sure. Yeah, why not? I don't, I don't need a spleen. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> do, we, do we need kidneys? Do we really need both kidneys? <laughs> um, that, you know, but just kind of any like. But right now, I mean, 
yeah, I can't. Th- I'm now trying to think like what would be that one jersey from the Ducks movies of that one player, and I have a hard time putting my like, like I don't know. I just feel like and maybe it's like it's something for me to think about more. But I'm like, whose player would I like? Which player? Which movie? Like, and I don't think it would matter at least right now. Who is your favorite? Who was your favorite duck, like, as a kid? Adam Banks or Guy Germain or Jesse. Mm, interesting. Um, I've always found Charlie to be kind of whiny. <laughs> like, he's always <laughs> kind of annoyed me a bit. Um, especially, he, huh? I think that's my issue with D3 is he just gets a little bit too. Do you know what's funny about Charlie is, uh, so or, or Joshua Jackson even, is that so i like beloved i i really liked charlie he was one of my favorites growing up but uh, maybe i was whiny as a kid so maybe i could relate who knows but uh what's funny is i've just started watching dawson's creek for the very first my favorite time. shows uh, right so i'd never seen it and um you know if, uh, if, if people don't know that i i host a one tree hill podcast and a lot of our listeners also are fans of Dawson's Creek. So I'm watching it and doing like sort of commentary on my, on my Instagram. Um, I'm really enjoying doing it. It's really fun and enjoying watching the show, but it's funny because these are like the years of Joshua Jackson that I missed out on that. I didn't see that. These are like the gaps of what he was doing before he went on to doing some of his, you know, like more adult roles and like he's doing, he's doing great. Have you seen um, little fires everywhere? Mm -mm. it's really good it's uh here it's on amazon prime but i think someone said on the podcast the other day it might be on hulu maybe or something but it's joshua jackson uh kerry washington reese witherspoon it's a drama it's really well written really well acted i really recommend it um but it's really cool to see him you know as you know i know almost a middle-aged man i guess uh and he is awesome in it it's like he fully transitioned from child actor all the way through so yeah yeah he's a good actor and when i say i've always found him whiny i should say he's mostly relegated to d3 right. um just from the beginning he's mad at bombay and like he never seems like open-minded to like why bombay might want to do something and the new coach and just even gives hans kind of a hard time before he dies and it's like oh come on buddy Ish. yeah um you know yells at fulton when fulton's like i kind of want to better myself so i'm not going to just be you know playing hooky all my life but um you know there's a movie with joshua jackson and the girl that's his love interest in d3 they played they did a movie right after where he's a hockey player and i think she's a figure skater i've never saw it but i just that's crazy that girl somehow i saw her like i think she commented on one of the other cast members like uh instagram post and i was like is that the girl and it was and she was just showing pictures of like from the movie of that her and joshua jackson did and he was a hockey player so i definitely want to see that too crazy yeah i didn't know that yeah me too i need to find (laughs) that now as well um but yeah i mean the i i i it's funny now because game changes is out i don't know if that's probably i feel like that that has reinvigorated some of the original mighty ducks fans because uh even like some of our uh podcasts that have been online for a while like for like a year almost um like with with matt doherty plays Averman. i mean it doesn't it has like a thousand views it's not like something it's not some like crazily viewed video or anything but even like it's been getting a lot of hits recently because people yeah. are like, Googling it and YouTubing it. So I don't know if that means that like the marketplace for people wanting these original jerseys mean is going to be like tougher, you know, to like people are going to be more into it. Uh, or maybe it's going to make people want to put their jersey, like if people that have them in basements and whatever are going to put them out and throw them on eBay. So like, like someone like, hey, honey, uh, that jersey that's been doing absolutely nothing i think this is tied to that show like let's put it on ebay you know let's put it on it like amazon facebook market you know see what happens yeah yeah well i see as soon as soon as i see one or see something i will i will uh for sure for sure uh, let you know man cause... no and I, I appreciate that but honestly man like if it's you know a piece that's going to mean a lot to you and you get it i'm very happy for you and i know you'll share about it 
you know, I'll get to look at it like from there. So it's not like that. <laughs> that's so it, sad. I, no, you have to have it. I, I feel fulfilled in, in the Jersey department. So it's about, yeah, you need, you but need one. We're getting you. I, it's I, happening. I feel like, I feel like, you know, and it's a conscious decision, but, and I guess this is a decision we all have to make, but I feel very blessed with the things I do have, you know, even as a newbie to this hobby or, um, so it's not thing like I'm going to let myself stress out too much about. I mean, I've asked you questions, Connor questions like, OK, when I do see that item, like, how do you go about it? You know, so I'm definitely like gearing myself up to jump in if I see something, but it's not going to be something that just destroys my life either. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Because totally. it's what, you know, you do see the people whose hobbies just rule their life. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, they not not saying that this rules this person's life but uh my, one of the biggest prop collections that i've ever seen i've i've reached out to this guy because i really want to speak to him and uh, assuming it's him i don't i don't know he don't, they don't <laughs> ever put, uh you know pictures of themselves on so it, it might be a woman him her whoever i really want to speak to them because they have the biggest prison break uh collection of oh, i've ever seen like that's and they've got everything from from did you ever watch prison break uh i think an episode okay well i mean it, i mean for the context it doesn't matter it's just like they have yeah, yeah, yeah. They, have, they have outfits they've got all of like the key fit like it'd be the equivalent of like having i don't know just everything from the show and uh i think basically they when they at the end of these shows these days they usually do like an auction and just and you know sell off like you know some of the stuff and and they, apart from Disney, who like vault everything, but they, uh, apart from apart from these jerseys, for some reason, uh, but he just he or she has everything, and it's so it's so cool. But this, like, it, they've got like a room that's just they've got like mannequins that have all of the outfits on and everything. It's like a whole different level. So I really want to speak to this person. That's cool. And, that's awesome. And, and find out about it because there is enjoyment in just you know, yeah just observing so i love people with passion and i don't need to share the passion you know if someone's passionate about i don't know uh prison cricket break. you know <laughs> prison break whatever like i will listen to that podcast because I, much more than i care about prison break i care about like why is this person so into it how do they get into it what does it do for them when they get it like i i just find that so fascinating yeah i agree it's 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 uh it's like contagious isn't it it's like oh that's awesome like for, and that's and that's just being positive it's like it's a show of your positivity that you're happy to see someone else happy about something you know as long as it's something that's not hurting anyone or anything and it's just yeah absolutely yeah, it's yeah i love that and that's the whole culture of it but i mean i i feel like we're gonna have to do an episode here where we get on you connor aaron theo and we're gonna have to like do something around the mighty ducks films maybe like dissecting it like maybe we could do some sort of uh you know going through the movie from like the ultimate fat fanatic perspective and like breaking that it was, down or something that would be so fun and just seeing things from like through other people's eyes you know that you may you may have never caught up on mm um or caught on not caught up on caught on um and so i would love to do that so just you know and i have a lot of free time it seems so whenever you guys want to do that count me in excellent yeah i'm sure this this won't be the end i mean when and and you know when you uh you know get something and you want to share it or whatever then you know come back and we'll uh we'll do it again and i i'm super grateful for your time super grateful for your insight uh it's been a pleasure speaking with you and uh, yeah, look forward to, to seeing, you know, what, what you get next to it and, and where it goes. Absolutely, man. I am um, more so than I appreciate your collection. I appreciate who you are as a person. You're a very giving person, generous person. Um, you have your priorities straight. And I think that um, is way more impressive to me than the jerseys that are hanging up as incredible as they are. So um, keep up the good work. Um, I'm excited to listen and yeah, man, thanks for having me. It's uh, a truly a blessing. You're an incredibly kind person and uh, you know, the same sentiments as well to you. So uh, yeah, thank you. Oh man.
but we'll do it again really soon well just oh, yeah. before just before just before uh where where can people catch you on on social media and all of those places i'll put the links below but but yeah, where, sure. where can people find you um my personal instagram where if you care about pictures of like you know my personal life like family and stuff like that is bean town underscore jason but my instagram account that is devoted to my collecting of mighty ducks and karate kid stuff is daniel larusso is going to fight <laughs> which is an epic line i love that absolutely it's gonna fight love that yeah and like johnny and like crease are like what like ali comes up and whispers in it's like daniel larusso is gonna fight so that's one it, of man. the best the best little throwbacks in cobra kai is when uh daniel you know claps the hands to do the uh mr miyagi bit yeah and, and he's uh and then it's like okay let's get a medic in <laughs> like it's such a good joke and i know we already kind of said this a million times but that's what game changers i want to see a little bit more out of game changers mm. uh, versus you know i appreciate that it's a new story but we need a little bit more nostalgia yeah yeah i fully agree i fully agree um and, and just to say if anyone wants to get involved in uh you know any of the stuff that i have on social media it's at simon podcasts um and yeah i throw things up from you know all the different sort of podcasts and things that uh that we do fully appreciate everyone checking this out and for your support um and yeah thank you thank you man it's been a pleasure i'm telling you you blow this game and nobody makes a team next year. Mad props.